G'day enthusiasts and welcome to another episode of Rob's Shed. Today we're going to talk about my 1970 Holden Ute. Now as common with a lot of cars that are heading for 50 years old, it's rusty. And the big thing you're going to find with any car you restore is you're going to be chasing rust and chasing rust. And how often do we look at a car advertised for sale and the ad says, car was restored two years ago, small rust bubbles now appearing here, rust bubbles repairing there. Well, quite often the rust is in places where you can't see it and you can't find it. So a repairer will cut out as much rust as he can see at the time the car was in his workshop. And then two years down the track, there's areas adjacent to those places that are rusting through. So I'm doing a really thorough job of my car and I've got rust in the roof rails here above the gutters. And I've got in and I've tapped away at it and I can tell that the metal's really thin because it's just caving away. There's these little indentations where you just tap it with a hammer and it crushes in. So that means that there's rust in the roof skin just inside the gutter line. And in the past, when you're doing someone's car and you're doing it to a budget, you will start cutting away until you think you've reached the end of the rust. So whether you cut a portion out and you come back this far and you take the piece of metal off and you can see that the back of it's still scaly rusty, so then you might chop off another 25 mil an inch or so, something like that, and then you keep sort of cutting it back in little segments until you find clean metal on the back. Now, a little bit of history of this car. Prior to me buying it, it was left out in a paddock for a few years under a tree. So a lot of moisture. It came from Victoria. It's also known to be wet in Melbourne and areas, places like that. So it's been a car that's been exposed to a lot of moisture in its life. I could also tell once I took the headlining out that there'd been a lot of condensation in the roof and I could feel rust by feeling around the framework inside it. So I made the decision to take the roof right off the car to repair it. So we have got an area here where there's a factory spot welded seam. So that presses in there and you can see where I've drilled the spot welds out. And to make this smooth, the factory runs a seam of lead across it. There was also some evidence that there was some rust in there because the lead had bulged up. And you can see in here, this little patch of brown in here, that was rust growing underneath the lead, pushing it out and making a bulge in the lead on the outside of the car. So I knew I had to do work in there. So I have cut around here where the panel was welded together. There's a little MIG weld in here from factory drilled the spot welds and there was a MIG weld in here. So I've chopped, cut that through, prized this up. The area that we can't get to to cut apart in the way that the factory put the car together is where the gutter is. Because the gutters are made and then they are welded to the rail on the car. The roof is sat into the gutter and then it is stitched through here with a continuous seam weld. And that joins the gutter to the car. Now, if we were back in the 1970s, and we could buy a new roof skin for this car, it would come with the gutters already attached to it and with a series of instructions on how to replace it. Now, on the factory replacement instructions, it tells you to remove the original roof, remove all traces of the original gutter from the roof rail, sit the new roof in place, and because the gutter is already on the roof, it will butt up to the roof rail. The instructions then say to weld at two inch intervals a big spot of weld to hold the gutter to the roof rail. This matches the two inch spacings from where the spot welds were and it's just as strong. So then you're instructed to grind back the welds until they're flush and put a bead of sealant along in that crevice which matches the factory. The factory had a bead of sealant there as well. When it's done properly you can't even tell they've been replaced. So we will do the same thing. We'll prepare this roof up, we'll repair any rust inside the rail, we will repair the gutter back to how it was from factory, and then we'll butt it back on, and we'll do the welds underneath, and then we'll grind it and seal it. I'm also going to do a modification. This windscreen is from a Kingswood sedan. Now, when the model run came out, this is a HG, so it's the last of a model run of a HK, a HT, and a HG. The original HK series everything bar the Monaro coupes had a square corner in the windscreen. When the HT came out, they gave the Kingswood sedan the same rounded corner that the Monaro coupes had. So I like this feature and I'm going to convert my ute from square corners to a rounded corner. So I'll weld a little piece into the roof here. So that'll just be a little custom modification as I go and make my car a little bit more unique. So just pull this out and get it out of the way. Thank you. 
I have drilled all the spot welds across the front of the roof here. Now, this backed up my concerns of rust because when I got to the centre, the roof started crumbling away. So there was rust up here I didn't know anything about until I started prising the roof around and working with. And you can see, most of the roof is still in a straight line where I've got it apart, but where it's rotten, there's no strength to it. It's just caved way in there. So that'll all get repaired while the roof's off. Where the spot welds were attaching the gutter to the roof rails, I used a narrow chisel and slid it straight up in the crevice and then drove it through and actually cut the gutter away from the spot welds. And then once I've got the roof off, like this, I was able to grind away the remnants of the old spot welded pieces of gutter. So when we look at the roof, we can see where I've chiseled the spot welds away. Now because we're going to be putting a weld right along this edge in here, we don't need much of this metal here. So I can actually cut this back and I'll probably leave eight to 10 millimeters of material instead of this roughly 20 millimetres here, poked in there. And you can see the factory put no rust proofing at all on there, it's just bare metal, which is typical of cars built in this era. When our roof goes back together, naturally I'll coat everything with weld through primer, and that will keep rust at bay for much longer than just putting bare steel back in place. Now, the back edge of the roof, around the back window, I've already replaced this edge here. What I'll do is I'll just spin the roof around so we can get a better view of that and that was done by making a panel that started here with a right angle fold and then had a fold in here and I've welded it along the flat now I've mentioned this before I really don't like welding corners it's very hard to keep them straight and accurate particularly on a long weld like this and it's also very easy to weld through the corner of the weld and have it crack in the future if you butt weld back on a flat face you can always get really nice penetration on it and you know that once you grind it back off smooth you've still got plenty of weld left on the back of it. So we'll spin him again and we'll look at the back. You can see from that there's excellent weld penetration all the way along that length of that weld. So this will last until the car eventually rusts away again and being 50 years old now, another 50 years it won't be my problem. Here's the rust in the rails that we pointed out before. This is the left hand side and it's much the same as the right hand side and you can see by the pits in the metal here that it's eaten quite a way through it. So we'll cut that off well down away from the rust and we can cut this piece of gutter back along here and lift that up and then we can see just how far the rot has gone along the roof rail and all very easy to replace now that we've got the roof off the car. When we're looking at the structure of the car you can see all this brown surface rust on there. Now while none of this is in danger of rusting through because it was never painted, it's very easy for me to sandblast it now, prime it all, paint it all up and then I'll know once my roof goes back on the car that it's going to be secure for a lot of years. We can also see where our rusty seam was along here. The metal's quite pitted but I don't think it's actually bad enough to need replacing. So once it's blasted I'll be able to see into that and see whether I need to do any more work, but I don't think I will. It'll just be a case of paint it up, put the roof back on, and redo the welded seam, and then replace the lead. We've been putting a lot of photos of this build on our Facebook page, Rob Shed Car Restoration Channel. There's a new website coming and we'll have this car from start to where we are now of all the photos, which includes driving it home from Melbourne, and we'll keep that updated as we go along. The website's not quite there yet, so I'm not actually putting out much information about that, but you guys will be first to know once we get it there. Please subscribe to my channel, add a comment, and if you want to know anything more, contact me. And you can contact me easily by putting a comment on the YouTube channel, or you can go to our Facebook page and contact me via Messenger, or you can email me at rob, rob at robshed.com. I'm Rob Teal, thank you for watching.
When our roof goes back together, I'll coat everything with weldproof, <laughs> weldproof primer. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs>